I feel like I owe you guys an explanation every time I disappear for six months and I swear if you care for a life update let me know there's been some changes there's so many things going on but I gave you guys a part one to this video and then disappeared and so I figured I would come back just to give you guys part two and three kind of combined. Okay, okay, let's do that. So what you're gonna notice is I'm gonna hop in and off, on and off, in and out of YouTube, um, and it's gonna be significantly more casual. I just hate doing structured videos. And as a person who has undiagnosed ADHD, and I also have mood swings, I don't have the energy to like put myself on to do structured videos. So it's gonna be chaotic, but welcome to the chaos. Um, if you haven't seen any of my other project management videos, they will be here and here. Not clickable, so don't touch your screen, but they will be linked down below, and these just happen to be the thumbnails. So as I mentioned in the first part, I went over kind of like my career journey and my salary and roles that I've had, and it kind of gives you insights into like what I've done. <laughs> the reason why I say I've been gone for a while too is because I'm also transitioning and in full transparency, I would say in the next three years or so, I'm gonna actually be transitioning out of this career. I will be bringing you along for that journey, but just FYI, I'm gonna give you as much advice as I can. That information will never change from me. I will always stay up to date with my industry, but just FYI, your girl is on a growth journey. And you know, we're thinking long-term about what we're doing with our lives, right? From those two videos, I think it would be super beneficial for me to just go through the comments or pick a few and give you that information from that per for that person's perspective. I think there's still value in that. Um, and then I'll just kind of sprinkle information here or there. Yeah, I, I, let's just say that works. So we're gonna go to my Uniqlo video first. And we're just gonna pick a comment from there. The first person is saying that they're a college student that's focusing on project management, strategic communication. I, I, I'm very thankful for the compliment that I'm living your dream job. Um, and you would love a step-by-step -step on what positions and work experience that I've had. I believe I left you a comment um, about that video. So feel free to reference my project management video. It goes into super detail about that. Um, second person is Alexandra7782. I want to shift from social media management to more project management. So this is a nice look at some things to expect. I plan on doing a day in the life as someone who works remote. I don't think I can film in the office where I'm at right now and I'm not going to try to, but I think it's a very different role than what I had in some of my previous positions, still obviously within like project management and creative operations. So I think there's value and you kind of seeing like what that looks like. Um, so I may film that, may not, just an idea. Miriam, I'm trying to move from PM to marketing PM, trying to learn how to get better and make sure I'm on top of it as I like to move to a mid or senior role. So I, I'm gonna assume that you're like a general project manager, probably in like tech or operations. Marketing is different and it depends on if you're doing like marketing operations versus like creative operations. They're very different where creative ops is, it would probably live in a corporate structure like with a creative team. So you would have more one-on-one -on -one conversations that way. Or if you're doing marketing operations, you're kind of like the middleman between a brand team or a, a general marketing team, maybe a growth marketing team. And you're also in between like IT or you're just in the middle between other functions and you may not have a direct relationship with like a creative team. So it depends on which avenue you wanna go down. I particularly have been in both, um, but if you're trying to be more creative, then you would be leaning towards like creative operations. And if you're trying to be more in the strategy and in the business and decision-making, then you would lean more into marketing operations. I would say the biggest advice that I can give you is decide which one you wanna go, which route you wanna take, cause it's hard. And really, if you're gonna go the marketing route, educate yourself on some marketing principles and really understand like the foundations of marketing. You're really gonna have to understand the branding, the customer experience of whatever product your company sells. Maybe you're gonna be um, a lot more in the weeds about data. So let's say projects are happening, you wanna understand 
what are our goals? What are we trying to achieve? What is our messaging? What are we pushing? What's our promotion like? What is the product we're pushing? And then within that, you're gonna also have to understand, you know, what a recap is, like how did certain things perform? Um, are there any best practices that we can take away from that so we can do it for like the next campaign? I think um, all of those things are gonna be super important as someone that's in marketing ops, but then the additional like layer that I would say on top of that is understanding any systems, any programs, AI is gonna be a huge thing in the industry. First of all, it's huge now, but it's gonna get bigger over the next year. So how can you automate? How can you simplify? How can you consolidate? I think you thrive in marketing operations when you have that perspective of how to make people's lives easier and also more strategic, right? If I wanna go the creative operations route, it's super similar in terms of, I think the benefit and the value that you can add is your point of view based off of data um, that you would get probably from that marketing team that you would be working with, but then you're also becoming an advocate for the creative team. So you have to also understand um, the scope of work that the designers are used to and the copywriters are used to. Um, what are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? Um, really understanding, again, the branding, typography. You don't need to understand the weeds of it, but you do need to understand the skeleton and the bare bones of what that team does, because essentially you're going to speak on behalf of them in terms of capabilities to get a project done. And then you're also going to be in a position where um, you're going to probably need those best practices to help their lives. So the same way you would need data to make the strategy stronger on this part, you're going to need the data to make their creative probably stronger on this part. Where they are similar is that both can benefit from the same information, it's just your audience is going to be very different. Where I, as like a creative ops manager, is going to talk with the design team, I'm talking with a creative director, I'm talking with a copy manager or a copy director. Um, but on a marketing front, I could be talking to a brand marketing team or a social media team. So your lens is very different, but there are some similarities. Um, let's see, Jennifer Monique, she says she's looking to switch careers from district manager to project manager. What was my degree, if you don't mind me asking? My degree was in marketing. Um, you can study business administration. I think over the last couple of years, people have actually developed degrees specifically in project management. So if you're interested in that, you can do that. Um, I remember seeing a lot of questions about education around this. And so I think if you know you want to be a project manager and you're in your teenage years or you're in high school or, or very early on in your career, you can major in that if you want to. I think if you're either transitioning careers or you're just realizing that this is something you wanna pursue and maybe it's later on in life, I do not think you need to go get a bachelor's degree in this. Like, please do not. <laughs> I think understand what industry you wanna be in. So let's say if it's retail or social media, digital marketing, maybe an agency or something like that, pick marketing to study so you, you at least know what people are talking about. I, I don't want you to go into a new job super green. Google is free. <laughs> like, please do not jump into a program um, when there is so much free information out there. I think if you're transitioning from one career to another and maybe you have zero project management experience, like let's say you're a nurse and you decided that you wanted to be a PM, I think certifications from Google and Coursera are helpful. I think that gives you a foundation, the cost is super low, you're able to manage your own time to get that certificate and there's just such a wealth of knowledge in that program. Do not spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a degree. I trust and believe me, you have transferable skills that do not require you to spend that much money and that much time commitment. Save your money. <laughs> so with that is actually this one other person that commented that Tropical Sunshine is the person I'm gonna call out. So that's exactly it. She said how to get into marketing, project management, pay scale, industries, education, and or courses. So. I already touched upon the education part. If you wanna take individual courses, there are some that are out there. Again, I'm just being mindful of like money, economy, and time, and time is money for you. And so I personally have found that Google Coursera happens to be my favorite, um, and it is certified versus just taking a course to take a course and then you kinda of can't do much with it. I would much rather you invest in getting that certification I don't think from my personal experience and my career journey that getting a PMP 
certification, like a, a true like industry project management certification, I have never met anyone that actually needed that at all. I'm just gonna be completely honest with you. And it could be because like I have a marketing degree, but like I never needed to have PMP certification on my resume to get any job that I've ever had. So it's not to say that there's no value in it. I'm just saying for marketing specifically, which is my background, it was neither here nor there for the jobs that I've had. And it was neither here nor there for the people that I've also hired. Um, for me as a hiring manager, it was the bare minimum of, do you have a degree that's relevant? And if you didn't have a degree as relevant, did you have any internships or freelance work or any type of initiative that could show me that you have transferable skills to be able to do this job? So I think like, think about those types of things and not like I need to have PMP in my name or I need to get my master's degree. I personally don't think it's necessary, which is why I, I didn't have my master's before I jumped into project management. It, it just wasn't necessary. I would say the industry thrives if you're doing marketing, creative, business. Those industries rely on experience or at least the attempt of experience a lot more than a degree and a certification. Tech may be different though, so it's important to just research those industries first and then make a decision from there. Um, Stiletto Shea, I do wanna actually just address this. This has nothing to do with the larger topic, but I've also noticed myself that the project management space lacks a lot of people of color. And I also noticed that in the marketing space, especially retail marketing. And it was really disheartening for me in the beginning of my career. And I also was kind of searching for someone that looks like me. And it was really, you know, not that it mattered, but I think it was a little disheartening to when you're striving to climb a corporate ladder and you're like, oh, no one looks like me up there. You start to question like diversity of the company, but then also like, do I want to be that person as that representation? And I think in my early to mid twenties, that was like really big for me. And I just wanted to be that person for anyone that was coming after me. And then I just had a, a point, which we can have a whole conversation about this if you guys are interested, but I think for me, I don't, the, where I'm at in my life now, especially I'm 31. So I think I had this realization when I was 29 or 28, um, I made a decision to not climb corporate ladders because I was tired of working extra hard to make money for someone else. I think there's a, a limit of effort that I, and this is not a bad thing. This is this has nothing to do with where I currently work or whatever, but I think you have to balance out your mental health and your time with the job you were hired to do. And so there's a balance you have to have between being like an overachiever and doing your job that you were hired to do and just enough for you to get your promotion. <laughs> I think I'm just basically trying to say you have to really have a good work-life balance and then you also need to have your own personal goals. And so if I'm going to work extra hours on a regular basis and put in extra time and do extra things that's beyond the scope of my job, there needs to be a conversation about a title and a pay with that to equate for the effort or I match the effort of the needs of the business at the time while balancing out what I need to do with my life outside of work. So I think for me, I, it's not that I want to break the glass ceiling. I think I very much removed myself from that thought. It's more so that I want to pave a way for visibility of people of color in a different way without being tied to a singular company and a position at that company. I'd rather much be the founder and CEO of my own business and let that speak for itself than be director and VP at somebody else's company. That's really where my head is at. Um, this was actually a funny comment um, by Painted RS6 on brand nails. <laughs> I made this comment in the video because um, certain companies that you work at may have like a dress code. Um, no, no, none of my companies have cared. Like you can see my nails and yeah, like I, I actually get more compliments about my nails and expressing myself than anything else. So completely fine. I've gotten this question a lot. Am I open being a mentor? So here's the reality of it. I will also probably comment it down below if, if there was any takeaway from this video. 
I have opened up myself for mentorship or like coffee chats, I think in the last year. And then at some point I built my LinkedIn for you to be able to kind of make time with me and like chat with me and all that other stuff. The reality of it is that if I ever wanted to do a mentorship program, I wanted it to feel more educational where people got something from me rather than just talking about it. Cause there's also a time commitment, right? And so I mentored someone last year on like a pretty consistent basis. It was like a weekly basis and that was fine. But then I had to imagine for myself, what if I had to do that for 10 people? I simply don't have the time and the capacity to do 10 mentor individual conversations and develop them with the attention that they deserve. Um, two, I would feel really uncomfortable spreading myself way too thin and not providing like quality mentorship. And then at the same time, be really present in my full-time job and still be present with my friends and my family and also having a social life and also just having downtime for my mental health. So I ended up not doing that anymore. So the one person who had, you know, the few people who have met me or have emailed me, like you caught me at a great time when I was really advocating for that. I think where I'm at right now is I'm not doing that type of mentorship anymore. But if you ever need like a big sister, like <laughs> conversation, I'm always down for that. Um, and I don't charge for it. I think that was the biggest thing too, is like when people say mentorship, they, it's usually tied to money. And as much as I love a side hustle, it just feels really uncomfortable. So if there's ever like tools that I create, that's like a digital thing that you guys can purchase, that's like a, a resource for you, totally down for that. And it's hard because I wish someone mentored me that looked like me when I was starting out. And I feel like there's a little bit, it, it's a little bit of a moral thing for me if I charge someone to do the same thing. So that's kind of why like a mentorship program like never really happened with me. It like, it just like never made sense and I never sorted out how I felt about it. So feel free to email me, feel free to like DM me on Instagram, leave a comment on this video. I'm always open to answering questions. Um, but if it's anything that's like long-term, I haven't sorted out how I wanted to approach it in a way that balances out my morals and values. Um, and I'm also just trying to be like respectful and mindful of my time as well. So for now, no, but again, my DMs are always open and you can always email me. I think that takes care of the majority of the video of the comments on that first video, which I think had the most anyway. Um, and then if I go to, I think I had less comments on this one, which is completely fair because I think people were waiting for this video to like engage with it, which is fine. I hope I say your name right, but so, so real. I spoke about retail experience, having soft skills. She has reads, she also has experience in retail and you're back in college trying to pivot to PM. And I love that it resonated with you. I, I know people have found me and messaged me on LinkedIn too that kind of had a similar background. So this is like always exciting for me. Um, you're welcome for the video, sorry. I'm also just like reading in real time trying to like react to it. Yeah, I think a lot of people are asking about certifications. Um, I wish I could pronounce your username, but it's W-Y, carry a fan. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, you're trying to get into project management and you got an internship with someone that works in digital marketing and they're trying to help you become a PM by allowing you to be their PM, which is interesting. So you, you feel like you don't really know what you're doing and she doesn't really know what you're supposed to be doing either, but it allowed you some type of exposure. Is there a way that we can set up time to do like a coffee Zoom? That would be really helpful. So as I mentioned, totally open for a DM. Um, in terms of a coffee Zoom, it really depends. <laughs> Again, it depends on time. Um, and, I, and I probably would set up a Zoom depending on the context of our conversation. So that's, to answer your question, that's how I'll base it off of is like, I am really big and I say this to my team as well. I am the most helpful to you when you know how to ask a question. <laughs> and so when you say like, I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing, I would love in scenarios like that, and this is for any PM or someone who's starting off as a PM, 
try to help educate yourself first. I think a lot of people just ask a question and they want the answer. I am not the person to give you that instant gratification. I'm more so your mentor to help you develop the way that you think. Make sure you have really strong critical thinking skills so that if I'm not around, you are also equipped with the tools to help yourself. So I think in this scenario, I can't help the fact that the person that you are working with doesn't know what you're supposed to be doing. That's really unfortunate. Um, but I think if you just look up some project management um, roles and responsibilities, that helps to give you a starting point to form an opinion on what you think you should be doing. Um, and then if you email me or DM me kind of like a little bit more details about like the company you work for and what you're currently doing, <laughs> if you're still there, um, then I can help guide you in the right direction. I think without any information, it's really hard for me to have an opinion like I mentioned, but um, if you had to take any way, anything away from what I'm mentioning, it's educate yourself first. I think that you are always going to be your biggest advocate, right? And I'm always going to hold you accountable as like your big sister on the internet. And then the second bit of this is that when you start to educate yourself to figure out what you know and what you don't know, then your questions become significantly more thoughtful and strategic. And then someone who is a little bit more experienced can actually weigh in to help guide you in the right direction. So if you're able to meet me in the middle, then I can help you as best as I can. I don't really know if I can do a Zoom call, but like you and I can talk one on one about what that would look like. <laughs> um, tips on transitioning is really self-education. I'm gonna just be real with you and I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I think transitioning from one career to another, if they're unrelated, is going to be hard. Um, and so you're gonna have to sacrifice some time. Maybe there's a monetary investment. Maybe there's some programs and events that you wanna go to to kind of build up connections. Um, I think coffee chats are super helpful if you can find someone in your industry that's willing to do them. Personally, I found that people may be resistant, <laughs> which is why I lean more towards events um, where you can just listen in. You may not have to be like an active participant, but if you do like free events online, free events in your city, um, other people's YouTube videos like mine, I think any type of free education you can get is going to be helpful. And then if you're talking about like actual skills, then I think the biggest thing that's gonna be transferable is like, Communication skills are necessary across the board for any job. And I'm talking soft skills like your body language, your tone, whether or not you're rolling your eyes, like are you a team player? You don't have to code switch, but you do have to be professional and polite. Um, even if there's like a variance of opinions, you have to be the bigger person in those scenarios. If they're related to each other like let's say if you're in an industry that's related and just trying to do like a one-to-one -one move then you at least have industry knowledge to kind of back that up i think it's much harder and it's going to require a lot more effort if you're coming in super green so educate yourself connect with people on linkedin and ask them questions if and you may hear nothing but you may hear something and that could be life-changing and then the biggest thing that is the most cost effective that i found the most helpful is to get your Google certification. It shows that you're trying as you're interviewing and if something requires a PMP certification, you can take that route, but it's gonna take much longer and it's gonna be much more expensive. So go through the Google route first, um, see if you like it. It helps build up your, at least your knowledge about project management and then you can kind of transition from there. So I know this video was all over the place, which was very intentional, but I hope you guys found this super helpful and the best way that I could talk to you guys right now. Um, like I said, this channel is just gonna be a lot more lifestyle based. It's a lot more about me. Um, I'm really hoping to just add value to this space and add another face to this platform. Um, and yeah, if there's like certain things you wanna see and you wanna hear about, let me know. Um, but if not, I really appreciate you guys for like, words are hard. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys for sticking around. Um, this community has also grown a lot, especially a lot of people who have come here from like the color wax community or K-pop community or project management community. Um, I'm really just trying to create a space for people who look like me that have a ton of interests. And this is just like a vomit of a channel of all of those interests. So. Thank you all so much for sticking around. I really appreciate it. Thank you for riding with me this whole time. More to come. 
don't know when but something somewhere is gonna be coming and i love you guys so much so bye <laughs>